Paradise Garden Attained by Douglas Slater with Charles Dance as Fritz Delius and Anna Massey as Yelka Rosen. Delius in Paris, 1896. How are things? Oh, about as bad as they could be. My uncle's cut off my allowance. So, now he and my father agree about something for the first time in years. They disapprove of me. My father always thought being a composer was just an excuse to float around Paris from salon to cafe and swan off to Norway and Leipzig when I felt like it. Music isn't a proper profession, not like the wool trade. He'll try to bring me to heel again, but I'm going on as I am. They all ask, if I'm a composer, where are the concerts? They see the rest of my life. They think I don't work. I won't even discuss it. I live, I work. There's no doubt a connection. I'm not going to waste time thinking about it. I haven't done the work I want yet. When I have, it'll be performed. You can be sure of that, and they'll hear it. In the meantime, I'm certainly not going back to Bradford. I didn't when I was 19. I'm not going to at 33. They can help me or not, as they wish. Bravo! But what are you going to live on? It's who, not what. Friends? Lovers? As a vagabond. Like you, Halfton, in short. Isn't it lucky you've reappeared? You can repay me for the meals you've had off me over the years. Starting tonight. I'll meet you at Charlotte's Cremony like old times and we'll make a night of it. And you'll pay. Meanwhile, I'm going to see my princess. Every time I pad up the stairs after your footman, I wonder what he's thinking as he shows me to your boudoir, your lair. No doubt he thinks what is the case. And you don't care? Why should I? Thinking doesn't stain his livery. <laughs> Even though he's thinking about you. I rather like having handsome men think about me. Your servants? Mm, even my servants, who are chosen in the light of the fact that I like attractive men around me. Are you jealous? It depends whether I should be. You shouldn't. Sleeping with servants is usually more trouble than it's worth. Rather unkind. One invariably ends up dismissing them. Or committing suicide in a barn. I don't see myself committing suicide. No, I don't see you committing suicide. Except for your sake, my beloved, if you should desert me. When we leave off, shall we put it like that, you will find yourself a painter or a writer. You would run an exquisite literary salon and enjoy it more than your musical parties. But I do enjoy them. Up to the limits of fashion, of course. They wouldn't have been wasted then, if I ended it tomorrow. I don't worry about that. You are Gautier's barber, Fritz. You would shave beggars for charity tomorrow. But today... I'm still loitering out here in the cold. I wasn't going to face the old witch alone. <laughs> You're three parts cut already. I'm going to get blind. Madame! Yeah. Madame! Well, Monsieur Yeager. I'm a friend. So, madame. I was thinking only the other day things were peaceful. Now you turn up to punish me. Why don't you stay in Sweden? Uh, Norway. Oh, well, wherever it is. What Paris, Donny, brings you crawling back here? It harbors the adorable Madame Charlotte. You can stop that right now. You owe me money. No, surely not. Nobody bilks me. You eat for cash or not at all. What is Monsieur Delius paying as if? No, nope. tonight I am paying for him. And cash too, since you insist. Yes. Yeah. They can sit there till we've drunk it all. So perhaps you'll bring us two bottles to anchor it. I wouldn't want it to blow away in the draft from your customers. And we'll eat too, madame. I've got good boudin noir. But you'll have to wait. I'm busy. Just sit quietly, both of you. We'll look for some women after we've eaten.
night air. You're not going. I am. I'm drunk. A cold air will make you drunker. Good. Are you going to see your princess? Of course not. You'll vomit. <laughs> Good. <laughs> oh, what's wrong, Fritz? Go back to your woman, Halfton. Tell me. The, the drink isn't strong enough and the women aren't attractive enough. Well, we'll, we'll go somewhere else. I'm not going anywhere else. Are you turning moral on me? I'll whore and get drunk when I want to, and not when I don't. And tonight, I don't. <laughs> Old times, you said. That's right, I did. But I'm not going to strain for something I used to do without thinking. All right, if it still came naturally, but it doesn't. It sickens me. I'm not turning moral on you. All I know is I spend my spirit and my energies and the money I haven't got, though I couldn't give a tinker's cuss about that, and all I get in return is self-disgust. Because against that, there are other times when Paris and its rumbles of appetite sink to a hum over the horizon and I can work. And then I remember what it's like to hear the quiet of the blue over the roof or the tree in the courtyard barely moving under the window. And all the years I've spent in this roar seem merely wasted. Do you understand? Perhaps. Do you care? <laughs> I don't believe it, anyway. What when the rumbles come back? They are you, not Paris. And you're a fool if you forget it. Now, oh, go home if you want. I'm going back in. I'll see you here for lunch. Uh, a late lunch. <laughs> Now it's you who's hanging about in the cold. Am I late? I'm sure I wasn't so drunk I said I wouldn't be. Um, I thought we might go somewhere else. What's wrong? Daniel de Montfried's in there and I'd half promised him I'd buy one of Paul's pictures. What with? Quite. Uh, well, uh, make your mind up quickly. There's a hideously ugly girl giving you the eye from that balcony. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Isn't that the Colorossi? Yes. Oh, an art student then. Skipping classes to ogle passers-by. With glass, glasses and scraped back hair. Oh, save us from plain women. Come on, Frizz, let's go into Charlotte's. Hell, Daniel may be rich, but he's got enough poor friends. He'll understand. All right. <laughs> the honor of the English. Half a promise, and you're cutting one of the few generous men around. He may stand us lunch. Oh, that girl is ugly. Eva? Come inside. Aren't you cold? Oh, don't mother me, Yelka. I was stifled inside. You can hardly have the windows open in January with the models sitting around. Oh, I don't see what difference it makes to a plaster cast. Try drawing one with blue fingers. I'm bored of trying with the fingers I've got. There's been a rather good-looking man down there, loitering outside the cremerie. What's wrong? I wonder if he was conscious of me. It's so difficult to tell. Yet that's what some women spend their lives thinking about. Do they get to know instinctively? Hmm? And if he wasn't, why was he standing outside? Why would anybody stand about outside in this weather? I'm standing outside in this weather, wondering what's wrong with you. Perhaps I'm fed up with being an art student. A female art student. Perhaps men have more fun at it. They certainly paint better pictures. I don't see why that shouldn't change. Oh, don't lecture me on that. Maybe I'll feel like taking up the cause of the new woman again tomorrow. Today, I'm bored with what I'm doing. Wish I could be like you, working steadily on, concentrating. I used to be able to. Today, it just seems impossible. And I can't see any alternative. Get married? To whom? Come on, Ida. Let's go in. I want... Oh, what can one do? If I knew that, I might have done it myself. As it is, I work. It's worth it, for its own sake. You want to be like me? You are, I'm afraid. 
Every day I think perhaps something will happen. Every curb I step off, every room I go into, perhaps something will happen. Can't we force it? No, I believe in my willpower. I'll look for what's in reach and I'll reach for it, I promise you that. That doesn't change the fact. Things happen or they don't. And meanwhile, people either go on doing what they're doing or they sit in cafes and get hopelessly drunk. And being who we are, we have no choice. It's only men and tarts who can sit in cafes drinking. Come on, Fritz. Ah, you're not drinking, Daniel. You're not for me. You're as bad as Fritz. He's turned moral on me. No danger of your being infected, Halfdan. <laughs> not me. For me, the good life is a sensual, not a moral concept. Oh, shut up, Halfdan. <laughs> you must ignore Fritz, Daniel. He's reverting to type. English. <laughs> London is the most vicious and depressing city in Europe because the English can't enjoy life for its own sake. I'm going for a walk. Where to? Uh, oh, just to turn around the Luxembourg. Perfect. I'll join you, if I may. Goodbye, madame. Goodbye, monsieur. And give Mr. Yeber another bottle. Ah, on me. Well, you shouldn't waste your money. You know, I love this city. Every street sings to me. I love the elegant vigour of it, the way it looks and the way it sounds. Formal gardens and flowing streets. There's nothing forced or mechanical about it. I say it. <laughs> Heavens, if ever a town was a she, Paris is. Wanting to be loved, but not wanting to let on, and so making herself herself. There's nothing more attractive than self-will. Nothing more worth having. I love places that are definitely themselves. They give a power of being. Like Norway, where the mountains overlook the world. And Paris, which is another sort of mountain with everything stretched out, waiting. If only the traffic didn't clatter past in the street and my concierge didn't crash the dustbins in the courtyard. There's no need to stay in Paris. And I've just been singing her praises. Paris is adorable. She isn't perfect. In fact, she can be downright destructive. Perhaps. But where else is there? Where else could a German Englishman go and be free? Germany is as bad as England. As narrow and brash and puritanically self-obsessed. Both full of people wallowing in a fog of sin and disgust and calling it decency. You know what you should be doing. You're just distracting yourself by being a full-time bohemian. That's what my uncle says. He's right. So do something about it. If you really want to work, do it. Go away if you have to. See the right people. No one if necessary. Use some of your freedom to say no. Sounds very moral. Half them will be appalled. And it's not as easy as that. How does one do it in practice? Hmm? I try to get down to work and Halfton burst in with an invitation to an orgy. And it isn't just him. No, it's people like me too, with a message from the Mullards, which, if I had eaten half a conscience, I'd forget, that they're holding an at-home tonight. Oh, God, they're not. Don't they realise things have their day? Don't they see we've all gone to the four winds and only the hangers-on are left? They don't want to see it. It's a waste of time. Don't go, then. Oh, I'll go. If only because I may get a free meal. to be performing bad. I'm afraid I may simply have drunk one glass of wine too many. <laughs> we haven't met. Fritz Delius. Yelka Rossum. I take it you like Greek? Yes. Do you? Yes. Too much to enjoy hearing him drowned by babble. I'm sorry. Shall we move over there? It may be quieter. It's hardly your fault. It's musical. It's just that the Mollard menagerie isn't. Are you a musician? Yes. Oh, help. 
I do feel a fool. <laughs> what brought you to Paris? I came to study painting. Tell me about that. Are the Impressionists your gods? I don't like to talk about painting, Mr. Delius. Oh? It doesn't seem to me that there's much to be gained by small talk on the subject. One paints, or one looks at paintings, or one shuts up. Here, here, Miss Rosen. <laughs> I feel exactly the same about music. That seems to leave us little to talk about. It does, rather. We could try literature. Do you read, Miss Rosen? Yes, Mr. Delius. And what do you read? Ah, I do read the Scandinavians. Bjornsson, for instance. Ah, Bjornsson. Now, here's another friend of the Mollards. So's his daughter. Oh, I don't think she's here tonight. Do you read him in Norwegian or just in German? Oh, just German, I'm afraid. <laughs> I shouldn't worry about that. Look at all these people. Most of them ardent nationalists, spending all their time in Paris speaking other people's languages to each other, so as to be understood. What sort of nationalist are you, Mr. Delius? Norwegian? Or, or German? <laughs> Neither. Far from both, I hope. Music, luckily, rises above all that. I don't think I think of myself as anything other than I. It seems absurd, especially surrounded by this cosmopolitan babble, to tie oneself down and say, I am German, I am English. I've lived in England, America, Germany, Norway, and now Paris. Paris longer than anywhere, but I am emphatically not French. What would you say? You're not French. <laughs> I take that as a compliment. Why did you think I was German? Do I have an accent? No, but your name. My name, of course. Well, Delius is German, and so is Fritz, horribly. Is it short for Frederick? Unfortunately not. I was christened Fritz. Perhaps I should change to Frederick. It even works in French, Frederic. <laughs> Actually, all these people regard me as English. I was born and brought up there. It gives me a certain cachet to be an artistic Englishman. Certainly, my parents, who were born in Germany, regard it as shameful. My mother, who's German too, has actually brought me to Paris to study painting. To chaperone you? Well, yes, that too. How useful to have a sympathetic parent. I wish mine were. It sounds to me, if you'll forgive me, that you've escaped quite successfully. Perhaps. That was simply a matter of will. Yea, saying to life, rather than to one's family. We're back with books. So, I take it from that you read Nietzsche, Miss Rosen? Yes. And do you understand him? Could one? It speaks to me. <laughs> Behold, I am a prophet of the lightning. And a heavy drop from the cloud. Is it my imagination, or is it getting noisier again? Yes, I'm afraid so. Just when we found something to talk about. <laughs> Perhaps you'll let me come and call on you so we can continue the conversation. Of course. And we won't talk about music or painting. Well, Fritz, what happened to you last night? Uh, coffee, madame? Brioche, too? And how about saying please? Not this morning, I think. I don't think it would stay down. And uh, I wouldn't mean it, respectively. I ought to throw you out. Oh, you'd miss me. <laughs> You're too late, Halfton. I'm finished and gone. Well, stay and chat to me. No, I have calls to make. <sighs> For your princess? For one. Well, make it the second. Uh, perhaps her husband will be away. <laughs> no, I don't think I shall. Mm. And mind your own business. This is opportune, my dear Fritz. You can escort me to the Opera Comique. Your husband? Hates Mercenary. And you should know that I wouldn't dream of going to the Opera with my husband. Besides, he's elsewhere tonight. Well, aren't you going to ask me which Massonet? I, too, hate Massonet. All Massonet. I have a particular fondness for Manon, which is what I wish to see tonight. Oh. Either I can stage a scene, which would be frankly beneath me, or I can ask you what is wrong. Then you can reply through your teeth. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Am I sulking? Hmm. Someone who knew you less well might think so. I'm sorry. It must be very obvious. And you're right. 
I don't want to be asked what is wrong. I don't know. Something is wrong. I am wrong somehow. Aren't I enough for you? Oh. No. Perhaps I shall stage my scene now. Or shall we leave it to Manon? Such a good reversal of our role. You have no conception of my loathing for Massenet. Because he's better than you? Because he is so competent and so much performed and so worthless. Whilst I waste my energies... On me? Yes. <laughs> Just seeing you sucks all my energies. You're too close to being enough. You divert me completely to your own ends. You leave me too little of being myself. <laughs> oh, what an egotist you are. Don't you see there's no future in this? Nothing but an ebbing. But the present is still exquisite. Oh, I know. I shall call for you this evening. Oh, must you rush off now? No, but I have someone else I wish to see. Mr. Delius, how good of you to call. I said I should. I hope I'm not keeping you from your work. Not at all. I was at the studio this morning, but the light goes so early these afternoons. Of course. But it leaves time for other things. Reading Nietzsche, for instance. Oh, I hope you don't mistake me for a great student. Not at all. A sincere amateur. But you, Mr. Delius, when do you get your work done? Ah, I... I I'm sure I'm your exact opposite. Artists need light, I need the dark. Or at least I need the quiet that night brings to Paris. Isn't there a composer's equivalent of the top-lit studio? Yes, silence. Peace and calm. Not to be had, unfortunately, merely by building walls. At least you don't have to sketch from nature. Not set up an easel to capture a view which changes every time a cloud comes across the sun, or you even blink. No, I admit that. <laughs> One doesn't set up an easel. The impressions are more elusive even than that. Rarer, more fleeting. But we needn't compete about which is more difficult, music or painting. I take it you paint from nature, Miss Rosen. Of course. How could I do otherwise, seeing the Impressionists are my gods? What? It was what you said last night. Then I was guilty of being flippant. Where do you go? Towards Fontainebleau, I'm afraid. I'd be afraid. It's scarcely original. There's no point in originality for its own sake. If you can stand all the drinkers and babblers down there. Mm, there is a lot of talk. Which you obviously escape. Yes, I'm lucky. There's an old garden with the high stone walls that run down to the river and the owner lets me paint there when he's away. It's rather good to work in because it's all so overgrown. <laughs> the owner's completely mad. He keeps horses in a carriage which he drives around the garden in and out of the trees. And he won't allow any of the stable litter to be carted away but has it all dumped on the garden. So you can imagine the plants run riot garden flowers and vegetables and weeds all mixed together and growing so fast you can almost see them do it. <laughs> it's very quiet. I mean, I go there each summer and there's a comfortable place to stay and well, I get the work done. And I, I think... I think it's better each time I go back as my eye for the place grows clearer. Sounds remarkable. I can't describe it. Of course not. You paint it. Why does one feel one ought to be able to talk about these things? Because we spend so much of our time talking. And every fool thinks he is an expert at it. Whereas very few are. Perhaps we might strike a bargain for the spring. If I plan an expedition to the country, will you take me to see your garden in return? Done. When you're not busy, which you are now, I should imagine, I've kept you. But when you've a moment, Perhaps you might like to look at these. They're one or two songs, including one to those words of Bjornsson's we spoke of the other night. The same that Greek said. Oh, thank you. Don't look at them till I've gone. When shall I return them? Let me call on you again. I should like that. Goodbye. Goodbye. Your maid was just showing him out. He is rather good looking, as I thought yesterday afternoon. Yesterday afternoon? Mm -hmm. 
I stood on the balcony and watched him outside the cremerie. At, at least I think it was him. No, 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 I'm sure it was. Oh. Hmm. Well, <laughs> who is he? A composer. Fritz Delius. You must have made an impression to have him hurrying round to call next afternoon. He brought me one or two manuscripts to look at, two songs we talked about. <laughs> when we were children, it was so easy to say, it's not fair, I saw it first, give it back. Oh, Ida, I haven't got anything. <laughs> well, perhaps you haven't. In which case, it's unfair on both of us. Another cruel mirage. Well, we'll see. Hi, Fritz! Halfton? I thought you must have left Paris weeks ago. <laughs> I thought you must have made away with yourself. What have you been doing? Uh, uh, don't tell me. Working. <laughs> but why haven't I seen you? You know where I live. And Paris wouldn't be the first city you'd had to leave in a hurry. I'm just. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I've been occupied. And you're not anymore. Why do you say that? Why else would you be out and about at this hour? Ah, because for me, my dear Fritz, this is just the end of a gorgeous night, and I'm on my way to get some sleep. Don't these spring mornings mean anything to you? Ah, spring in Paris is miraculous. I'd forgotten how sweetly my sap could rise, not to mention how far and fast. Hasn't your sap been rising, Fritz? How's your princess? <laughs> I haven't really seen her. Not really seen her? <laughs> I hope your work is good to warrant your abstinence. I don't know. I'm getting on with it. Uh, I can see you have an attack of puritanism. It's getting worse, Fritz. You'd better come and have a cup of coffee and let me talk you out of it. No, thank you, Halford. Uh, on me? Thank you, but no. I am on my way to call on someone. Ah, anyone? No one you know. A gender? Female, but not really pertinent. Sounds dull. Oh, well. Enjoy yourself. Oh, I shall. Yelka, I'm so glad to have caught you in. Has something happened? Are Prague doing the opera? No, 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 nothing like that. It was just rather a magnificent morning. I say, just. Isn't this sort of morning an event? So I thought I'd come and tempt you away from your painting into the country. Our bargain. I'm planning our expedition now, this instant. I should really go to the Colla Rossi. Not on a day like this. You can't sit inside in a dim religious light when outside is flooded with this. It only lasts a few days and then it will all have changed. The sun is drawing the leaves out so fast I can almost hear them burst. One can't stay in Paris when that's happening. Come on. You're right. Of course we can't. I'll come. What shall I bring? Sketching things? If you like. But nothing that delays you. Food? We'll buy some. We've a train to catch, not to mention the morning. <laughs> All my life, when I've caught the moment like this and feel, as I do now, like a balloon, I think, of course it can't last, but do I care? In fact, it's somehow glorious. It's the twitch that frees the string. I spiral. It can't last. Who cares? Who's got the time to care? Nothing out here, that's for sure. Thank God for the country. God. One must thank something. It would be ungenerous not to feel something as all this climbs and shifts and hangs and resolves and as you scratch away. Who am I bothering you? I was trying to sketch quietly. <laughs> Could any man ask for more? Not only the pleasure of watching you work, but you're trying to do it quietly. <laughs> oh, Yelka, you're absurd. If I wasn't so comfortable, I'd kiss you. So at the end of the day, one returns to lighted streets and the different evening roar of the city. And then I can say again, yes, this is where life is. Where I want to be. To experience everything as it is, all of it, immediately, as it flows past. I don't know that I've ever felt the flow. I've always been concerned to catch an instant. The instants never are caught. That's the beauty of them. They simply flow away. A walk, a meal, a sound, a slant of the light, the day. And then the sun goes down and one has only glimpsed it. Here we are. Will you give me a hand? 
you go through, I'll just put these in here. It's still early enough in the year to be chilly in the evenings. You're not cold. No, the fire's lit. Is it? Splendid. What a good room. I exert my charm over the concierge and my landlord at every opportunity. It pays off. Mm. The landlord made two rooms into one here, and the concierge lights the fire. Makes such a difference to have the fire lit for you. Do we need a lamp in here? No, not yet. There speaks the painter. I catch all the evening sun. It's magnificent. Unfortunately, it means I miss much of the view over Paris, but then that's the disadvantage of Montparnasse in general. You're so high up. Not high enough. Do you hear that? That's one of my neighbors who mends copper pans. He must be the busiest tinker in Paris. He never lets up. It drives me mad. When everything else is silent, he still goes on. Now, if you'll wait just five minutes, I'll have supper ready. I'm afraid it'll be the scrappiest meal, even more of a picnic than lunch. And a piano, of course. I never told you how much I liked the songs. You don't have to do so now. But I did. I just felt rather embarrassed about it. I, I hate people talking about my pictures, which is silly, I know, but um, I felt shy about the songs. But you liked them? Oh, yes. Good. Wonderful. What? You didn't ask me which I liked best. No. Well, everyone always does, whether it's pictures or poems or songs. But you seem not to care. Well, there they are. Either you hear them or you don't. It doesn't change them. There was one. Shall I ask which? It was the one to Bjornsson's words. Hmm. Twilight Fancies. I liked it better than Grieg's, I think. You're perilously close to talking about music. <laughs> Here we are. Salami and olives for hors d'oeuvre. And there's a beefsteak to follow, if you eat that quickly and don't let it spoil. Oh, it's not a picnic at all. <laughs> I think you're right about that song. It is closer, perhaps, to what I'm aiming for. If one can put it like that, when I don't see what it is. <laughs> We're back with talking about... Not the music, then, but the words. They're so beautifully melancholy. And the sun went down. Aren't all words for songs? Isn't melancholy the stock in trade of the songwriter? You're laughing at me. Be serious. I am, partly. If you have a happy song, which is beautiful, it carries the seeds of melancholy, yearning. What we were talking of, one seizes things, adores them, knowing they'll go. Spring days drift into evening, and the sun goes down. And I have to fetch a lamp. And the rest of supper. After all, one can't be writing superstitious nonsense anymore. Endless te deum. At least, people do, but they shouldn't. And here's the next course. Oh. Looks wonderful. Hunger. We've had a good day in the open air. Mm. Glass of wine? Yes, thank you. The mm. song is soon over. It should be short and sweet and slightly sad when it goes. This is delicious. Come and visit you. Halston. Uh, I don't think you know Miss Rosen. No. Miss Rosen, may I present Halston Yeby? How do you do? How do you do? Halston is an old friend from Norway. Were you looking for me earlier, Halston? No. Miss Rosen and I have been down to Fontainebleau for the day. How pastoral? We went on the train. How industrial? It was lovely. One of those crisp spring days when everything glitters. Mm. I'm sure I know the sort you mean. In fact, it was probably the same day in Paris. You don't like the country, Mr. Yebe? In its place. Which is? 
far away from me. Don't pose, Halfton. You like Norway. Yes, I don't like suburbs. I, I loathe domestication in people or places. Fontainebleau is scarcely the suburbs. In spirit it is, since it was discovered by suburban painters. Are you a painter, Miss Rosie? A student. Uh, of course. All the painters have left. One only meets students in Paris these days. Perhaps the painters have really gone to the suburbs. They seem to have a sinister allure. Fritz always swears he can only compose there. Paris distracts him. Well, I mustn't distract him any more. Won't you have some coffee? No, it keeps me awake and I have to be up early in the morning to catch up on what I missed today. I shall see you downstairs then. Oh, don't trouble, really. It's barely dark. Do you always have to be half cut? Uh, well, normally, it helps. Is this all you've got to drink? Yes. Pity. That sweet little domestic scene's given me a craving for drink. Oh, really, Fritz, an art student. <laughs> How could you? You do realise that is the last stage of middle age. It'll lead to trouble. I bet she's got her mother in Paris. She has. Oh, for goodness sake. Never bet a girl whose mother's in the same town. Not if she's still active, uh, maternally. Believe it or not, I haven't bedded her. I can believe it. She's just pleasant, intelligent company. Oh, yeah, she would be. She's plain enough. Where did you meet her? At the Mullards. <laughs> it all becomes clear. And now you're entertaining her to a cosy little supper for two. You crave some plain little wife your wicked friends won't want to seduce. Do you know how offensive you're being? No. Nope. It's one of the advantages of drinking. You're a fool, Halfton. I'm certainly not going to rise. You know as well as I do how likely I am to settle down. I know better than you. Forget it. Let's go for a drink. I want to work. No, you don't. And you shan't. I shall stay here and bang the poker on the grate until you come. All right. <laughs> oh, all right. <laughs> I'll come. This morning you were blithering about the spring. Doesn't spring make you think of sex anymore? Pleasant, intelligent company indeed. You'll never get her into bed without marrying her. Shut up. I'd stick with the princess. I thought you said she was beautiful. She is. So when did you last see her? Some weeks ago. And you're not feeling the lack? Well, all I can say is you will, sooner or later. So, Fritz, why haven't you been to see me all spring? I'm hardly used to it. I suppose you would tell me if your absence from my house meant your presence in one of my friends. I would. That would be embarrassing as well as mortifying, but you would, so. And I shall certainly tell you when I feel we can dwindle into old acquaintances. I shall do that when the time comes. Meanwhile. Meanwhile, I am here. Back, if you like. Here, anyway. And you, shall we have the windows open? No, don't, don't ring for someone to do it. Why disturb us? Let me watch you open them yourself. Do you think I can? Stay there a moment. Aren't you pleased with how luscious your garden is? With the chestnut tree just bursting into flower? And below it, your azalea. They're the same color, the same deep rose. You've got a strand of hair loose about your neck. Did you choose the house in spring to know the chestnut had candles so voluptuous to match an azalea? Or was it your husband you chose in spring to have his house? <laughs> and you have the most intricate and exquisite balcony in Paris. Its leaves twisted and twirled so. Fritz, what are you doing? I'm looking at you. How else was I to catch you unawares? So I could look at you. <laughs> really? Did you even want the window open? And you are still the most desirable woman in Paris. I can assure you of that. I don't know why I stayed away. 
And our desires aren't as far apart as you feared. Not feared. Yelka? Mm -hmm. Delius calls on you quite often, doesn't he? Quite. I'd like to meet him. Properly. He's rather elusive. And attractive. Yes, I suppose he is. So how do you pass the time during those polite calls? How does one ever? We talk. What about? Painting, for one thing. He knows a lot about painting. He seems to spend most of his time with painters. Do you talk about music? No. He doesn't like talking about music. But you don't like talking about painting. All seems rather one-sided to me. I've seen some of his songs. And you show him your pictures. Mm. Are you taking his advice? When it's good. You're not being very forthcoming. I don't know what you want me to say. <laughs> I worry about you. Delius has something of a reputation. <laughs> Either. What a glorious phrase. Well, I wonder whether you're falling in love with him. You haven't introduced him to me. It just seems rather odd. To tell you the truth, I'm a little hurt. Don't you trust me? Yes, of course I do. I'm just not sure I trust myself. I suppose I am falling in love with him. I'm rather ashamed of it. Why on earth? It seems such an ordinary mess to be in. I thought I was more practical than that. He's so good looking. Not to me at any rate, and I suppose to other women, and here I am, just plain. But then he spends time with me, and we chat, and it's delightful. For me. And presumably for him. Isn't that the trouble? How does one know? Because he wouldn't do it otherwise. I suppose so, but I don't feel that. I simply feel cheerful when he's there and nervous when he's not. Oh, Yelka. And I know I could spoil it all. I mean, I see him in the morning walking down a street towards me, perhaps, and he's obviously been up all night working or drinking and smoking, and sometimes he's literally green and hollow-eyed, and then I long to say, why don't you look after yourself? You must live more sensibly. And I'm sure if I did that, it would be disastrous. <laughs> yes, I'm sure it would. Have you thought what's going to happen when we go down to Grez? What should happen? He might come down for a day. The librettist for his opera happens to live in Bioron. You'll have to go down and see him, and he may walk across and have lunch one day. Oh, how convenient. And I would like to show him the garden. You're aiming for this little boathouse over your left shoulder. Aha! I'm sorry to make you row so soon after lunch. It's just that this is the best way to see it first, and it saves messing about getting keys. Here. Yeah. Oh, very neatly done. I'll tie her up. There. This is the place I told you about. The old garden. With the strange owner. Is he here? The mad Marquis? <laughs> no. No, he's away, and the house is all shut up. Which is good for me, because I can go and paint right up close to the house. There are more flowers there among the general riot. More light. The trees down here make it permanently shady. I take it the Mad Marquis is your nickname for him? Sort of. Because he is a Marquis. But Ida coined it. Ah, the mysterious Ida. Hmm. When am I going to meet her? Whenever you like. Back in Paris in the autumn? Unless you'd like to come down here again. I don't think I can. I have commitments in Paris. Oh, he has a pond. Can't be very healthy in Paris in this weather. No, but on the other hand, nobody's there to disturb me. Besides, my financial plight doesn't make it practical for me to consider my health too lovingly. Anyway, I may get away at some point. Oh. There's the house, you see, with its stables on the side and the church tower on one side, and a ruined castle on the other. And Swifts. How it did it. I can understand why you come here to paint. One could work here. If there was no need to go back to Paris. So, Fritz. So, madame. Don't you find it oppressively hot, lingering in Paris? It has its disadvantages. And why are you doing it? When you could 
get away so easily? Because it has its pleasures, too. Such as? Taking advantage of your renewed fidelity. <laughs> and since no one else is in Paris, I can spend all the more time with you. I'm flattered. <laughs> so you should be. When other parts of you must be longing to get away. Parts of me. Of course, all of me could get away. If you would only come to... <laughs> A million thanks, but no, I have to work. Scruples about being paid for. So, did you enjoy yourself the other day with your uh, librettist? You suspect that even he is a plot to deprive you of me. He was as incompetent as ever. But I did have a delightful lunch by the river. In delightful company? You could say that. Female, I take it. As it happens, a female I am so enamoured of that I shan't see her again until the autumn. As opposed to the indifference I show you coming here every day. At the expense of my work. Such indifference. I sometimes suspect your work is the only plot you need to deprive me of you. You think perhaps that it doesn't exist? Would you like me to bring completed manuscript sheets every day to account for my time? No. You are, of course, right. You are the only serious rival it has. Both demanding, both unsociable. If I am not in a room with my piano alone, I am in here with you. You are comparing me to a piano? Pardon, madame, that was rude, but unintentional. You must admit that we cannot be seen in public together. We exist only in closed-off rooms, as my music does. The difference is, one day it may be fit to be seen. Don't play off melodrama on me, Fritz. I don't appreciate it. You don't regret our privacy. You dislike it if I suggest you escort me on any occasion. Be anything else, but don't be dishonest. I'm sorry, madame. I think I took your outburst rather well, particularly the comparison with a piano. <laughs> it is a very elegant piano. The thing is, I could not stand two jealous... Mistresses? Occupations. Couldn't I and your work be allies? Come to the country with me. There'll be no one there. No. Why not? I wouldn't work. Then, here we are, on these terms, because I will not give you up. You think the choice isn't entirely mine? I know it's not. And so do you, not so. Perhaps you're right. What I know is, the woman who does make my work her ally... Will have you. I'll have her, without a backward glance. I don't doubt it, Fritz. The question is... At what cost to her? Good evening, madame. A hot one. <sighs> Stifling. It's been like it for months. Is Mr. Yeby here? He is. And you can tell it's hot. He's drinking vichy water. Tell me, Monsieur Delius, has something happened? He looks very low. He's even saying please to me. I don't know, madame. Oh, well. Are you eating? Please. Halston? Hello, Fritz. Charlotte thinks you look low. She thinks right. I am. What's wrong? <sighs> Everything. The heat. No money, so I can't even get away. I'm stuck with this woman who hounds me. Uh, how's your princess? She doesn't exactly hound me, oh, but... It's stifling. And it's not just the heat. I can only think and feel with my thighs. <laughs> it's delicious in a way, but in other ways, I feel used. What's more, the art student's back. Oh, no. Oh, yes. Especially to see me. A letter waiting for me. Would I call on her for tea tomorrow? She wants me to meet her best friend. Meeting her best friend? That's bad. You're telling me. You know, we may have to do a bunk. Can we leave before tomorrow afternoon? 
don't know. But you could stand them up. I suppose I could. Or I could go and tell them I'm going away. Shall we go away? It's not very moral. <laughs> Will you stop needling me about being moral? Being moral is choosing actively what you ought to do. Now, this instant, in this predicament. And I say, we ought to go away. Miss Gerhardy, Mr. Delius. I really have heard so much about you, Miss Gerhardy. All from me, Ida. Would you excuse me for a moment? And all good. I've certainly been looking forward to meeting you, Mr. Delius. For any particular reason? Oh, well... One thing, because you're the first layman, if, if I might put it like that, whose advice on painting Yelka seems disposed to take, or even listen to. I hope she takes it very critically. That she takes it at all is most significant. I can't think what of. Not of my skill as critic or counsellor. Well, she certainly never listens to me. He's just coming. Are my ears burning? No, I was just saying, you never take my advice about painting. Oh, that's nonsense. I just don't take it as much as you'd like me to. Or I take it and pretend I haven't. <laughs> oh, just put it down over here, will you? Mademoiselle. Thank you. The most English of occasions for an un-English Englishman. <coughs> You've been in Paris all summer, Mr. Delius? Yes. Hasn't it been stifling? It still is. That's why I normally go away. You'll be very welcome to join us in Grez if you wish to. I'm sure you could get rooms down there. Thank you, but I... I think I may have to go further afield. Oh? For some months, in fact. Where to? My plantation in Florida. I'm rather worried about the manager, and I have to go and sort things out. Halfton Yeby is coming with me. I think you met him one evening, Miss Rosen. He's rather a bohemian character. Great vagabond, but excellent company. Especially on this sort of trip. Sounds a very long trip. With the journey and the business, I should imagine it will take six months. Are you leaving soon? I'm afraid so. This is, in fact, hail and farewell. So you see, Halfton, a perfect way out of the difficulty. We go out to Florida, both of us, and escape from our different encumbrances at a stroke. Hmm. With a good business-like excuse. All we need do is find the money. Ah, oh, we'll do that. We've done it before. Uh, how did the art student take the news? Quite well. Rob crestfallen, perhaps. <laughs> you know, you were getting in deep there. I know. Have you told your princess? No, not yet. So, sadly, I am afraid it's unavoidable, madame. This is my one real asset. I have to put my affairs in order. Of course you must, Fritz. I quite see that. Are you by any chance taking someone with you? Only an old friend from Norway. A man. It was a little crude of you to think I meant otherwise. Uh, and when do you go? As soon as possible. It seemed best to put things in order right away. And miss the Parisian winter into the bargain. How sensible. Well, I hope you enjoy yourself. I don't expect to do that, exactly. Oh, I'm sure you will. There are bound to be surprises. Wine, please, madame. Yes, monsieur. Success? A triumph. We're free. Have you booked passages? We leave the day after tomorrow. Excellent. I can't wait. Um, what exactly are we going to do out there, Fritz? I can't think why I didn't do it before. It's the perfect answer. Florida. I shall take the opera. Uh, what am I going to do out there, Fritz? Do? What do you ever do except play the violin and you can do that out there? Otherwise, you won't have to do anything. The house is unbelievably beautiful at the edge of an enormous river. We can hire servants and get on with living. You can bask on our own. Isn't that the whole point? <sighs> but you needn't worry, Halfton. There are river boats and society of all sorts in Jacksonville. We shan't be lonely, just marvelously unencumbered. Oh, Ida, it's so foolish. There's no justification for my feeling upset and let down, but I do. What does one do? The conventional wisdom says one works. I'm sure that's right. I don't seem able to work. My mind keeps wandering off into the Atlantic. And that's idiotic, too. 
And then when he started calling me Miss Rosen after months of calling me Yelka, do you suppose that was just for your benefit? To be formal? Well, the English are, of course. Oh, do you remember how bleak Paris was when we first came here? And it had been getting warmer and friendlier ever since then until now. Yeah, goodness knows he had to go off and deal with his plantation. He has appalling money troubles. If the plantation could be made to yield a living, he could come back and, and go on where he left off. Elka, have you thought he might not come back? Yes. Or if he does, that things might have changed. What do you mean? I wonder whether to tell you this, but I wasn't sure why I wanted to. What? I had a story the other day which someone was laughing over. How Delius fled Paris to escape from his aristocratic mistress. Princess de Sistria. I suppose so, but now she's disappeared too. With him? Or in hot pursuit. Oh. It rather matters which, doesn't it? Glooming on the rail. Uh, over there. Shall I leave you or hover? Hover if you would, Mr. Yeri, so you can shout woman of a board if he pitches me <laughs> over the rail. Uh, Fritz. You? Yes, me. Isn't it a coincidence? Coincidence, my foot. Aren't you going to say how delighted you are to see me? No. What on earth do you think you're doing? Enjoying myself hugely. Aren't you? You... You said surprises. Were you planning this, then? Planning? Of course not. I did it absolutely on the spur of the moment. I didn't even have time to check the guest list, and I had to come on my own. No maid? Well, my maid, of course, but no one else. So I came aboard last night disguised as a man, just in case anyone I knew was here. I take it there wasn't. Just you. But how did you know? Halfton! Uh, uh, not me, Fritz, I promise. I made it my business to find out. It wasn't hard. And I only made Mr. Yebe's acquaintance on board last night. <laughs> he very kindly arranged for the steward to move your things this morning, and his, of course, into separate, I hope, more comfortable accommodation. First class. As it happens. You can hardly escape me on a ship a day out into the Atlantic. And it would be a pity to spoil what could otherwise be a delightful journey. <laughs> You're too much for me, madame. All I can say is, you will deserve everything you get if you follow me into the wilds of Florida. Uh, wilds? Hey, you never said anything about wilds <laughs> to me. Ida, the Mad Marquis is selling the garden at Grez. Selling it. He's gone broke or lost huge amounts of money or something's happened, so he wants to sell it as soon as he can. Oh, help. Calm down. It's not the end of the world. Not the end of the world, no, but the end of Grez. Oh, all through this beastly, biting cold and wet, I've been kept going by the thought of Grez and the spring and getting back to work, real work. And last week, when the crocuses suddenly appeared, I thought only a few more weeks and I can get down there. Oh, we can still go down. Oh, with the garden gone, I couldn't bear it. It's just a place. But it's the place. Oh, Ida, I'm sorry. You'll miss it, too. I'm just being selfish and stupid again. Did you see the Marquis is selling at once? He needs the money. Yes. Well, why don't you buy it, then? What? If the mad Marquis needs the money, he won't be asking that much. But it'll be snapped up by someone else. Oh, I don't think so. I mean, I know it's your enchanted garden, but most people just think it's an overgrown mess attached to a house which has too many stables and is right on the village street. I've got what my father left me. Wouldn't your mother help? Well, she might. Only she'd never want to live in Grez and she'd say I couldn't live there on my own. Either. Either you wouldn't. Of course I would. At any rate, as long as you wanted me. And to keep your mother happy. Oh, but I'd want you forever. It would be perfect. <laughs> we need never be bothered. We just work and live perfectly simply. 
Oh, if only we can get it. Go and talk to your mother. Get her to see her lawyer and get him onto it at once. I shall. Oh, I shall. She's going to do it. And the lawyers have drawn up the contracts and we're completing the whole deal tomorrow. We'll be down there forever with nothing to disturb us. So, Fritz? So what, madame? We're almost at Paris. So I see. And you've said nothing all the way. Did I spoil your return to Florida so much? I was... Thinking of one evening coming into Paris from Fontainebleau, poised serenely between the day in the country and the evening in the city. Content. But you're not content now. You didn't spoil the trip, madame. It would be churlish to suggest it. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Oh, more, I think. But you did. It was interfered with, changed prevented from being what it should have been. I see. And what was that? Oh, it was probably romantic nonsense. Probably. And I tried to be an alternative supply of that. You have loved me. We're coming in. But no, I agree. This good thing should end. For my part, I have enjoyed a last burst of being disreputable and this Indian summer of our affair. But I shall release you, Fritz. You're not the man you were. Oh, I don't say you're not better. More serious. But not for me. If you'll excuse me, madame, I'll find a porter. Oh, there's no need. I've arranged for my people to meet me. Ah, there. <sighs> I'm going straight down to the country. Have you any plans? I don't know. I ah, hope you'll call on me anyway. There's surely no need for us to fall out. No. So, until then. You know... She got a platoon of footmen waiting, a complete caravan. How did she arrange it? I don't know. Where have you been? In one of the more vulgar bits of the train. There was an awkward atmosphere in your carriage. <laughs> Night on the tiles suit you. Drink it off. You're no fool, Hofton. Is that what you'd advise? To tell you the truth, I don't know. Are you staying in Paris? Same answer. Are you? I don't think I want to. Oh, I really can't think about it here. Stations always make me want to catch a train, even when I've just arrived. I want to find somewhere I don't want to leave. But then don't we all? Some of you. You still wake up and not believe it. I do. Yet here we are. Coffee. My own coffee. On a terrace. My own terrace. Overlooking, best of all, my own garden. Shall we have the grass cut? Hmm. Just by the house, perhaps. Yes, and a path down to the river. Otherwise wild. Well, not wild. Lush, rich. Endless days of painting ahead. Oh, pure pleasure. And working again properly at last. After all the turmoil. Serenely. I'm not sure I'm quite serene yet. I'm still too excited. But I'm getting there, gradually. Oh, I'm perfectly tranquil. But then I don't have the responsibilities of the householder. Responsibilities, indeed. It's pure bliss. I'd go to bed clutching the key if Marie didn't insist on locking up the place herself. Oh, she was a real find. Mm. Though I don't think she trusts us. Oh, I'm sure she doesn't. She thinks we're too young to be steady. <laughs> Which is particularly flattering in my case. And need constant <laughs> looking after and watching. A Breton hawk. Yes. Has your mother vetted her yet? No, but I'm convinced they'll find themselves in complete agreement when they do. Oh, Mother's already delighted to know it's Marie who does the housekeeping. And so well. This coffee is perfect. Mm. It's partly the place, I think, with all its scents. Oh, that'll be the post. Don't bother, Marie. I'll go. There's a postcard from Delius. He's arriving tomorrow. Oh, help. 
got back from Florida. He heard we were here. Paris was unbearable. He's coming to stay and do some work. If I'll have him. Well, will we? It's your house. And yours. <laughs> of course we can, as far as I'm concerned. If you're happy to see him. Oh, I'd love to see him. I mean, I'm sure I'm over all rapture about him, but he is such good company. <laughs> Bang goes the quiet life. There's only one of him, and he wants to work. The thing is, though, where do we put him if he's coming to stay for some time? We can hardly have him here. Your mother would be horrified. Mm, not to mention Marie. But we must have him here, during the day, anyway. We can get him a piano and give him the room over the stables. There's no furniture. He won't need more than a table and chair, will he? We don't. No, you're right. And we'll get him cheap lodgings in the village. He can have all his meals here. I'll tell Marie. <laughs> Isn't it typical, though, that he should just announce his coming after months of not hearing from him? Yelka, here I am. Here you are. Are you pleased to see me? I just scribbled on a card. Oh, of I... course I am. Come in. You see, the arch goes straight through the house to the garden. You didn't really see the house before, did you? No. And now it's yours. Yes. Three steps from the bare street to this. It's even more luxuriant than I remembered. You're not going to tidy it up. Oh, no. I want it even lusher. Do you like it? It's perfect. You see from here how the terrace falls away in a slope from the house down to the pond, and then there are the trees and the river. Can we go down there, now? Of course. All gardens should lead down to water. Nothing else matters, so long as the house has a roof. Has it? It's habitable for the simple life. What more does one need? Hello? Over here. You remember Ida? She's sharing the house with me. And your mother? Mother stays in Paris. Oh, there you are. Ida, you remember Mr. Delius? Miss Gerhardy. Or may I call you Ida? Of course. I've got some peaches and a bottle of wine. I thought since it was such a lovely afternoon, we should picnic down here. What a good idea. We've eaten almost every meal outside. We sit on the terrace at supper and watch the swifts. I'll go and get the things then. No, no, let me. Where are they? They're all in a basket on Marie's table. Marie is our bonne. An absolute treasure from Brittany. We're very lucky to have found her. Do you mind my coming? I think I probably behaved rather badly when we first oh, no, met. No, no, no. I'm glad you're here. If only because Yelka's so glad. And I'm glad to be here. Do you swim in the river? Oh, we haven't as yet. Oh, you should. I wonder how warm it is. Careful. I'm, uh, I'm not sure that the jet is very safe. It's the perfect temperature. The perfect place. I've forgotten. Oh, yes, you came down one day with Yelka, didn't you, last summer? Yes. These enormous trees and the heat. You know, one of my strongest memories of Florida, why I went back, was huge trees by the river where there's such a shimmer in the air that one can't tell whether it's the light or the heat or the ripples on the water. And it's here all the time. And you can swim in the river too, which you can't in Florida. Why not? Alligators. Oh. Isn't it too hot to work out there? Not for me. Other people say it makes them languid, but I feel it soaking into me, making everything simple and possible. It was impossible for me to work on this trip, as it happened. Was the trip wasted, then? Wasted? No, but it didn't turn out as I meant. But then, does anything ever? Here, Yelka, let me take that. Oh, thank you. I told Marie we'd have supper on the terrace. And we'll sit in here all about Delius and Florida. What if he doesn't want to tell us? What if it's too boring to hear? What I want to hear is how you came to buy this place. You never said anything before I went away. I didn't know anything. I never dreamed. But that is a long story. You don't really want the whole saga, do you? I do. Well, I can't possibly tell it now. It'd spoil my peach. It still makes me go hot and cold all over. But we'll have it all tonight, after supper. We'll sit on the terrace, and you'll tell us about Florida, and we'll tell you about this. It's 
so that was how it was. We moved in here, and we haven't a stick of furniture, but Marie sees to everything, and you can keep Paris as far as I'm concerned. Forever. This is too perfect. Things will get less perfect if I don't go and see Marie. Arrange how we're going to let Fritz out, will you? Mm-hmm. Marie won't trust us with the key. She thinks we're too young. And so, as the moon rose over the trees, the princess finished the tale of how she came to the garden. No princess. The sun has gone down. Hours ago. Mm. It's more La Lune Blanche. Pond and all. Do you really want to hear about Florida? Shouldn't I take myself off? Not unless you want to. I don't. I could sit here forever. It's turned so suddenly into a summer of peaches and wine. In the afternoon by the river, or now in the evening after supper. And I'm not used to it. It's making me light-headed. Either that, or all the honeysuckle. Why does the scent hang on the night air and not the day? Marie says she's going to bed. She's not going to wait for us any longer. And she's locked up, but she'll trust us just this once with the key to let Fritz out. I don't know whether I can say anything about Florida. What it means to me, or meant to me before I went. Because, curiously, I didn't find it there. And feel whatever it was more strongly here, at this moment, than ever before. Absurd, since I've only just arrived and cannot see one inch into the future. Except that, sitting here, one can sense the same hush, the same hum, carrying the silence of complete harmony. And I mean harmony. Sounds, abstract, patterned in their own way and in no other. Which is music. And why it reaches so much further than the other arts. Saving, of course, those present. That's what I don't understand about music. A picture starts in the world, but music doesn't. And I can't understand that. In the same way a man blind from birth couldn't understand light, even though he might know that light was there. Oh, the light is there. In your pictures and in my music. And it is the light of nature. It must be. But expressed for its own sake. No, no, that's wrong. In its own way. By its own nature with its own flow. Alive. And there again, sometimes it seems to me that music does grow directly from the world outside. That it has its roots not merely in sounds, but in places and feelings and the way they have been here. The trees, the river. In Florida, where one night I heard the sound of Negroes singing, sweetly, harmoniously, floating over the water. Was that music or a sound of nature? How could one tell? And this moment, here, I'm not sure it matters. The candles are going. I'll go and get some more. No need. Do you realize what time it is? Of course. That's the dawn beginning. Haven't you noticed the birds? Not until now. <laughs> I was talking too much. Too long. Too well. Oh, help, dawn. Marie gets up at dawn. What will she think? Let her think. We have sat, as people should, through the all too short night of summer to see the dawn. As painters should especially. To see the new light. The day may bring a revelation. I must go. Perhaps the night did. It did to me anyway. I'm sad it's over. There will be others. Thank goodness. One could not bear it if there weren't. But one doesn't have to. It goes on. We go. And gain in that the beauty of it all. It seems to me. The most intolerable aspect of heaven would be that it was eternal. To lose consciousness is exquisitely sad. 
rapturous, a triumph, and a defeat. If your music is the way you talk... <laughs> the audience would have left long ago. Would they? Most extraordinary. I thought she'd be shocked. So I said, we've talked through the night. I know, she said, I heard you. It seems silly for Mr. Delius to be paying good money for lodgings if you're going to have him here all night. Why not ask him to come and stay? Was she serious? Yes, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> You can start packing up now. Why? The light must be going. No, it's fine. At its best, in fact. How's your work? Finished for today. Hmm? I thought I'd come and find you. Shall I wait for you? I've not quite finished. Looks different from this side of the river. Your garden. Yes. If you and Ida sat on different sides, you could paint her and she could paint you. And you could row backwards and forwards. Mm, too tiring. Or skate when the river's frozen. It isn't a fjord. What would you do if Ida left? I don't know. She wouldn't leave you on your own, of course. Or would you go too? No, I'm staying here. I've got Marie. And you. For the moment. For the foreseeable future. Well, um, I'll have to go back to Paris at some point. I mean, I love Grez, but I'm not sure that... Shall we go? Yes, all right. I'll come. I suppose the light is going. The post breaks in on life here in the most exhilarating way. I used to dread it in Paris, but here it seems to bring agreeable surprises instead of bills. <laughs> like the whole of this summer. Here's a letter from Gunnar Heiberg. His play is definitely being done in Christiana this autumn. Where's my incidental music? Which I have actually written, thanks to being here. So that gives me a wonderful excuse to go to Norway. I think I'll go back to Paris today. What a pity, when the weather's so divine and Paris will be so awful. That may be, but this means plans. Plans? All sorts of schemes. Arrangements, people to see, people to catch up on. Come to that, the rent on my flat to pay. You're keeping on your flat? Of course. You're welcome here whenever you wish to come. I know, my dearest Jelka, I know. Doesn't my behaviour over the past few weeks prove that? But a flat in Paris is not to be whistled down the river. Not even the Loire at Grez. Do you know when you'll be back? Who knows? I'm sure I shall return at some point, but I can't tell when. Grace is wound tight round my feelings, I assure you. I've been working here so well, for one thing. So, as I knew I would return to Florida, I know I shall return here. Sooner than you return to Florida, I hope. No doubt, no doubt. It's nearer, for one thing. But again, who can tell? Oh, honey, I'm going down the river in the morning. <laughs> I'd better go and put my things together. Morning, Ida. Morning. Where's Fritz off to? He seems very cheerful. He's going to Paris. Oh. When will he be back? He didn't say. Did you ask him? No. Why not? Because it's no business of mine. Is that what he said? No, it's what I said. Oh, nonsense, Yelka. You're in love with him. Is he in love with you? Don't ask. Isn't he? Well, I think he's fond of me. I meant him to be that. Fonder of me than of anyone else. Fond isn't what I meant. I don't know how to call it anything else. He's living with you. He must face facts. Ida, what do you mean, face facts? What if he isn't in love with me? He didn't ask me to be in love with him, and I know that. And this is the bargain I've struck. Oh, it's intolerable of him to ask it of you when... He doesn't ask it of me. I give him it. It's this, or I lose him. I'm doing what I'm doing because that is what is possible. Not moral, perhaps. Not legal or conventional or religious. Fritz doesn't concern himself with those sorts of things. But because it's what he needs and knows he needs, and I can give him. That's how things are. Oh, don't you see? 
Even if I didn't love him, of course I wouldn't do it, but I do. I love you too. And you love him. <laughs> You've fallen under the charm as I have. And you even tried to hate him at first. But you failed. Mm, that too. And now I sometimes have to ask myself, which of you is it that I love more? I am sorry. <laughs> Why should you be? Wasn't that what you were saying? I'm saying all this now because I see how many demands he makes on you, and so I can't help asking, do you know? Of course I know. But what else can I do? Seems to be my job. Yes, but I had to ask. Well, my future's probably decided. I have it now merely to live out. I think he may marry me sometime. It'll probably turn out to be convenient. And he'll work, and so shall I. I hope. But you. I'm afraid you can't go and you can't stay. What will you do? What I can. We've been such friends. And still are. But Delius needs only one of us to feed off. Don't put it like that. Do you ever ask yourself whether it's worth it? No. That may come, but I never have. Not yet. I ask it less than he does himself. That may be the difference between us that he senses. You make him calculating, he's not. He just has compelling needs. Needs that compel others. They compel me, anyway. So even if it weren't worth it, I doubt I could escape. Not now. It's a fact of life. I acquiesce. Are you sure you're not just giving in? Giving up painting, giving up everything, because that's what women do in cases like this. Hmm? Falling for an artist like a romantic schoolgirl. It's so... Ordinary, Elka. If it is that, it looks different from the inside. And Fritz isn't ordinary, you know that. Yes, but it doesn't justify him. He doesn't need justifying, he just does it. It seems I fall in with that. What can I do? What would you do? The same. <laughs> but you have it, and I don't. Which one of us has the better part, I wonder? So, you're back, Monsieur Delius. It's a long time since we saw you. Where have you been? Florida, for one place, madame. And I took Mr. Yeby off with me. Did you lose him? Wasn't there some animal out there you could have fed him to? <laughs> <laughs> Sadly not. I had to bring him back. But goodness knows where he is now. I thought I might find him here. Not him. I've got a whole spike of his bills. But he'll show up here sooner or later. You all do. You go off to the ends of the earth, but you come back. And you pay, too, if you want to eat. Have I got any bills outstanding? Well, now you mention I'll it... I'll settle them, madame, and have whatever you have to eat, which is most delicious, to celebrate being back in Paris. Oh, 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 now less of that, too. Oh, the struggle I have to stay respectable. <laughs> Fritz! Daniel! I hoped I'd see someone I knew. Are you eating? Yes, though I don't know what. Madame is doing her best. Can I share your bottle until I get my own? Of course. So, tell me, where have you been? I heard you were in Florida. Then I heard you were back, but that was weeks ago. I've been rusticating. Somewhere I knew Houghton wouldn't find me. <laughs> I've found a sanctuary at last. In the country, beside a river, in a house where I'm looked after lovingly from morning to night. He'd hate it. And are you working? It's as if I didn't know how before. I can be alone to concentrate, knowing that when I need to stop, there will be talk and food and drink and time. It's marvellous. And yet, I still have my bolt hole in Paris. A choice of freedoms? You've solved your life. I've solved nothing. Does one ever? Would one want to? sounds too final, but I do seem to have found firm ground. I know there's no need to be harassed anymore. I've found a vantage point, and I can watch the world spread out below me, or ignore people, or come down and revel. And I can feel the work moving. And I know, as I put it down on paper, that I have the measure of it. Like a potter, enjoying the feel of clay. It's ecstatic. I'm intoxicated with everything around me and how it is becoming sound. Sound given force and sense and structure and flow by me, purely by me. The saying of what can't be said in any other way, in my own way, to my own bidding. 
and yet with a sense of rightness so fateful and mysterious that it seems inevitable. Texts present themselves and demand to be set. I know what I want. And all at once, I know that I'm beginning to reap everything I've sown. It's not a choice of freedoms, but being past choices. No going back. I have become. It's a time, in short, for work, for concentrating, for exercising my will to be what, if God existed, he'd know I shall be. In Paradise Garden Attain, Fritz Delius was played by Charles Dance, Yelka Rosen by Anna Massey, Ida Gerhardi by Fiona Walker, The Princesse de Sistria, June Tobin, Half Dan Yeber, David Timpson, Danielle de Montfried, Brian Sanders, and Madame Charlotte, Margot Boyd. The play was written by Douglas Slater and directed by Ian Cottrell. <laughs>